How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do the contract called uh, putting out the fire on, at the railway. Um, there was a couple of contracts I kind of had to choose from. Uh, there was this one putting the fires out of the railway or there's another one with the storage units that are kind of nearby, similar amount of water you've got to take. Uh, so I decided to do the railway one because then I can kind of break up the water delivery contracts a little bit like the next mission I could do could be to deliver the rail tracks. Uh, and then yeah, probably put the three warehouses out that are kind of pretty close to that railway anyway. Um, so I need two lots of 6,400 litres of water. So the first route I'm going to go with double dolphins, kind of up the right hand side of the map, get water from that tower, cut across the bridge I built, um, and then kind of yeah, wiggle through the forest until I get to the uh, railway station and then the second route I was planning on taking was kind of going along the south of the map and driving then up the left hand side and just kind of roughly seeing which one was quicker I suppose and um, yeah like I say for this one I've gone for um, double dolphins I can get a uh, it's 3,800 litres per truck I can carry so 7,600 litres in total which for the first delivery I'm gonna have 1200 litres kind of leftover spare but it doesn't really make too much difference in the end. Uh, yeah, got a goddamn professional with me just in case I need fuel or anything. And uh, to be honest, there's a couple of little things, little like tweaks around the edges they could do with doing really, as far as all this like water delivery stuff goes. First one you can see on screen, uh, I thought the winch had messed up. It was kind of winching from the middle of the water trailer to the uh, dolphin, and then tried to reattach the winch, it started jumping over to. Uh, the telegraph pole, but as you can see here, there's no winch point on the back of the trailer, so you kind of have to winch from halfway down the trailer to the uh, truck. Yeah, I was kind of doing a road train situation, otherwise I'd end up having to do four trips basically, so I was hoping to try and avoid that. Um, the game does make you go a little bit slower when you're in high gear and you've got a road train going on. Thankfully for at least a decent amount of it, um, the Dolphin's a pretty powerful truck as part of the reason I took it for this one so uh, yeah I was able to stay in high and actually keep going but you can see my trailer's always kind of on an awkward angle and uh, yeah the truck behind is just being pulled by a winch that's halfway down the trailer and uh, the other thing I think that was a little bit of a bad choice in the end was uh, that new derry you can have that as like a fire engine basically and that can carry 2200 litres and I could have swore I put a trailer on it and I went to try earlier and it wouldn't let me connect the trailer because it says like the basically the fire engine add-on is in the way and unless I tried it on a AGL's derry but I don't know because it was crashing most of the time and I could have swore I specifically checked the other day when I first ever got the derry was to see if it could have a trailer and the idea behind it being like the Dolphin and all the other trucks in the game have got this same standard size uh, water add-on thing on the back that can hold 1800 litres and then the trailer I've got can hold 2000 so that's 3800 in total and I was kind of hoping slash assuming that the new Derry if you've got it in like the fire truck setup that you'd be able to also tow a trailer like this behind you and the uh, yeah the Derry fire engine setup can hold 2200 litres so it can hold 400 more than like all the other trucks in the game really um, and then if you're able to add a trailer as well, you'd be able to take 4,200, which would then put it at like the top of the tree in the game. That'd be like the most amount of water you could take in kind of one unit. And then obviously you could do the same thing, kind of like winch to a road train, have the same setup again, and then you'd be taking, what's it, like 8,400 litres uh, in total. But unfortunately, it won't let you tow a trailer with like when it's got the fire engine set up so it now knocks it down from being like the biggest best water carrier in the game to the worst really because now in joint first place is kind of every truck that can have this water add-on which is most of the trucks in the game I even went and tried to check if there was a few quirky ones like the P12 has got a bigger maintenance trailer add-on uh, uh, sorry the maintenance add-on over a lot of the other trucks but yeah basically anything that you'd think might be able to have a bigger tank can't. Um, another example I think it was the uh, Bruce he can have like a bigger fuel tank or no that might be a normal fuel tank sorry and it was a normal water tank I think it's the Paystar has got a longer fuel tank but it doesn't even give you the option to have a water tank on that so yeah essentially you just go back to 
uh, it's kind of like every truck in the game is just like generically can carry an 1800 uh, litre water thing and then a trailer and then the derry as well it's only got a saddle high not a saddle low and the other option which I kind of do in the second half of this video is towing a big semi trailer with water which can carry 3700 litres so that works out at 100 litres less than like this setup um, but yeah the derry has only got a saddle high so you can't even take that trailer which basically means yeah it's like the uh, the new derry which is a fire truck and it's kind of you know supposed to go with the theme of this phase and all the rest of it is uh, ends up being like the worst truck really for as far as like being able to maximum water capacity um yeah so in the end i just that's why part of the reason i went for these dolphins um again i could have kind of mixed and matched with various other trucks but i, I wanted plenty of power because i know i'd be doing a road train situation and it's a bit of a trek from I'm pretty much going from the bottom right of the map to the uh, top left of the map. So yeah, just filling it up there, like I said, this is one of the water towers. Um, this one's actually on the game when you first get it and everything, it's not a tower I've built so far. But it is a tower that actually has water. That um, water boom thing that I built yesterday, I didn't use the water tonight or anything, but I took a Voron AE there earlier with a water trailer just to see what the deal was and all the rest of it and yeah it can pretty much store water which yeah I don't really see what the point is because you could argue yeah all right I've stored three and a half thousand liters of water nearer to say the railway or those uh, factories that I'll have to put out at some point or the warehouses but I could have just parked the Voron AE there with the trailer and you know it's a little bit like imagine if you had to go and deliver I don't know, logs or just consumables or whatever to a warehouse and then having a consumable or log storage place like eight tenths of the way there that you can just randomly store the cargo in <laughs> when you may as well just, if you're going to take the water that far, you may as well just do it when you're doing the mission or yeah, just take it and then you can park the truck and trailer anywhere you want, you don't have to like be forced to store it where the water boom is, you could store it anywhere. Um, so yeah, it seems a little bit irrelevant, but it is what it is. Like I say, yesterday I, was, I went and did the mission because I was kind of hoping that it actually give me the option to, uh, like, I'd be able to get water from there. Which, to a degree, I was even, it took me a while, um and an hour in, whether to do that or not, because I wasn't sure if then it'd make sort of these missions or contracts a little bit shorter, a little bit too short. Um, for this bit, I split the road train in half because I remember yesterday going down this path. It's a little bit awkward and it makes you want to tip over to the left. What I kind of found out the best option in the end, I probably didn't need to do the road train in the end uh, or split it up. Um, if you follow like the actual tracks of that road, you tend to want to tip. But if you put your right side wheels in like the left side track and kind of step over one truck length to the left, it kind of sits out a, a lot more balance. I kind of show it with the camera a little bit better with this truck. And yeah, the old auto gears are still feeling pretty weak. As soon as you can get it into high gear, it's definitely worth doing. Yeah, so there, like, if I followed the actual tracks, I'd be leaning quite a lot. But if you kind of dip your, uh, yeah, your right wheels in the left hand, oh, the left side rut, and then you've kind of got your left wheels up on the bank on the other side it kind of averages out and sits here relatively level the dolphin's not too bad for tipping anyway but yeah I kind of wanted to avoid that if I could and again I remember it um, they've obviously just pretty much cloned the fuel trailer to make this water trailer but yeah I do remember from back in the day that uh, there's no winch point on the back of the fuel trailer either which again is a little bit of an oversight I think especially with the various amounts of water we can transfer, like I said, this is the maximum amount, is 3,800 having the truck and the trailer. Um, to do this mission I've got to deliver two lots of 6,400, so that's a fair amount of trips. Um, yeah, and I just think for the amount of, the amounts that they've chosen for each mission and all the rest of it, um, kind of doing this setup and running a road train is quite an obvious option to cut down the amount of times you're just going to be running back and forth. Um, yeah, so to kind of not put a winch point on the back of the trailer, I don't really know why there isn't, to be honest. It's the same, I was saying with that derry where you're not allowed a trailer. Um, 
the reason why I really remember that I was able to put a trailer on is because at first I thought, oh, I bet they're going to cut blockers from it being able to do it, a bit like the seismic vibrator module does because it's got like a ladder at the back, or the maintenance add-on does it. And then kind of as I spawned the truck, I looked and thought, oh, you can actually still see the hitch. Went to do it, and I remember specifically adding a trailer and then looking and thinking, yeah, well, cool, like that's a good decision. But it's, uh, yeah, it's got like the little trailer hitch at the back and everything, so that makes sense. And then, yeah, like I've said, um, the only thing I can think is that I tried it when I was on my mod playthrough with a uh, an AGL Derry 15C, but since that thing was blue screening mo me most of the time and I wasn't really testing for that, then yeah, I'm not too sure. Just losing my marbles a bit. But, like I say, in the end, this is just works out as the best setup to run, really. Strictly speaking, even if I could bring the Derry and a trailer, I'd have, what was it, 4,200 litres. I'd still end up being over the amount of, like, it's... I'd have to take a road train setup and have two Derrys and two trailers. And then I'd just have more left over, I suppose. So, it's not the end of the world, but, yeah. Considering this is, like, the new phase and the Derry is the new truck and all the rest of it. It would have been a. It would have made sense to kind of make it the most viable option for doing the uh, the water runs. I suppose the other thing is though, it's in like the advanced special gearbox, whereas this has got the high range gearbox. So, in theory, this should uh, have a little bit of a quicker pace to it overall. And another thing I was testing out earlier, a few people let me know in the comments. Um, there's a bug going on with the water where apparently if you quit the game and then you load back up your trailer is then empty um, I haven't tested that one specifically but they also said if you travel through a gateway it takes the fuel, uh, takes sorry the water from your trailer but not your truck so after I took the Voron AE, you can actually see funnily enough in the top left corner Voron AE, Voron AE and the water trailer to fill that water boom 4 up um, I had 300 litres of water left over, so I transferred it to the trailer, and then I went to the burned forest gateway. And uh, yeah, when I travelled through the gateway, it did take the water out of the trailer. When I got to the other side, I had no water left in anything. And I don't know really, it's most likely a bug, but there's a slim chance they might claim that's intentional. Um, so you can't take water from, say, Albany... Was it Albany River? Uh, yeah, to burn forest, and then you're going to have to use like the water towers on the actual map itself. Um, yeah, as for like quitting the game and reloading, I've not tried that yet to see if it empties the trailers, but if that is as well, then I'd say that's definitely like more of a pure glitch. I still think the um, yeah transferring the gateway is a, if it is intentional by them, I think it's probably the wrong decision because the chances are I'm going to use the. Um, water towers on Burned Forest anyway, but the fact that they haven't got a garage on Burned Forest, I'm going to start from Albany River. So yeah, it kind of works out, it might be worth flying past the water tower. I know once you get the gate, the second gateway unlocked to Burned Forest, kind of the road from the garage on Albany River up to Burned Forest, you'd be going past the water towers, so you would kind of want to do it if you can. And obviously the fact that it's not going to take the water from your truck but it's going to take it from the trailers is a little bit odd so yeah a couple of little bugs here and there going on and I suppose the dairy situation isn't really a bug as such unless they decide to sort of repatch it and allow us to tow trailers but yeah I've got a feeling that's just intentional because it's got like the fire engine add-on uh, yeah just tip that dolphin there it's partly like because the way that it winches to the middle of this trailer. When you go around a corner, the winch cable just kind of you know phases through your trailer, so it makes the truck behind like cut the corner a lot more than it would if the winch point was right at the back of the truck. And uh, yeah, so the second dolphin kind of cut that corner quite a lot and drove up the rocks and rolled. But yeah, this dolphin, I mean, that's again one good thing. They've got plenty of engine power, so yeah, I think it took me longer just to reverse to get into position than it was to uh, just flip the dolphin back to his wheels. And I can't remember if it's if I've done it yet or what, but at some point I did need to use the fuel from that loaf, so he was uh, he was worth bringing along. I was just curious as well, like for this time to see if he could even fit on 
uh, that fuel, uh, the wall, I'm going to keep calling it fuel, the water add-on. I can add the loaf to the roof if I wanted to. And then now, I was driving along, I just saved the footage quickly there, but I was completely stuck. And I was thinking, if they seriously, I kind of, I was like, oh no, here we go, it's going to be a bloody tree stump. I was kind of thinking, no, surely not. But it was pretty obvious at this point because it kept catching all the axles. Yeah, they put a tree stump right slap bang in the middle of this cut through, which seems a little bit unnecessary. Like, well, there you go, you can still squeeze past it, but yeah, it's just another little trollish thing that they can't help themselves tree stump guy had to get one in there. And I was only like cutting through this way really, it just seemed like a little bit quicker on the map than yeah, instead of following the actual road and sort of looping all the way around, this was just like a little way to cut across, but you can sort of see that, you know, there is like a little road way going through here. Kind of the game sort of encourages you and hints that you could uh, go that way, but yeah, just watch out, it's a sneaky tree stump. Thankfully, I didn't, once I realised it was like, oh, I'm definitely on a tree stump, and I just put a winch from the front of this truck to the trees and kind of hoisted it off that way. And yeah, it only took me a matter of seconds, thankfully. But other times, yeah, I've been stuck on tree stumps for bloody ages, so. I'll uh, try and avoid them at all costs if I can. Still would like an option to rip them out of the ground and get rid of them. But I'm pretty close at this point. Once I cut through this little alleyway thing, I kind of meet back up with the uh, the rail tracks, and then obviously the rail yards are just down the road from that. And uh, yeah, it's getting pretty close on the fuel. I've still got fuel in the roof rack of the loaf. I just to access that, I'd have to like unpack the loaf, go to the loaf, and transfer it that way. I just quickly borrowed the fuel from the actual Loaf's fuel tank, so 80 litres. So yeah, I've still got a spare 120. And generally speaking, when you're running a road, tra uh, a road train like this, the lead vehicle always ends up using more fuel than the rear one, so if I actually switched vehicles, um, I'd have more fuel in the second dolphin. So there's the first place I've got to drop the water off. I just thought I'd go to this one first, so I'm not blocking the way for like the next set of trucks that I bring along. And then, uh, yeah, I suppose it works just kind of like fuel has always done, really. Just select the right one, uh, yeah, that one. And just start clicking and transfer over. Transfer, yeah, 2,000 from the trailer, 1,800 from uh, the tank on the back. And then at this point, uh, when I load this lot off, because like I knew that I'd have some spare, I started emptying it from the trailer first because then I wanted the water I had left over to be in the dolphin, not in the trailer, just so if I did ever need to nip it somewhere, I don't necessarily need to uh, take the trailer with me as well. And yeah, I think was it on this one it left me about 1200 litres. Which in the scheme of things, like I say, it doesn't really matter, because if I went and dropped it off at that second location, I'd still need uh, is it another 5,200 and there's no setup where I could carry that in one vehicle so I'm still gonna have to do some kind of road train one way or another and um, yeah for this one I chose the Navistars and instead I've drawn the line like there's uh, this other water tower that's pretty near to the garage and then yeah follow this road along the south of the map cross that river near the waterfall and then kind of up the left hand side of the map really at the minute it was looking like it'd be longer this way um, I wasn't too sure either way, I suppose that's really why, uh, just to mix the video up a bit as well, otherwise I'd basically be driving the same way twice, um, but there's also a slight bit of curiosity as to, yeah, see which way would end up being quicker. There is, I will say as well, to be fair, like, obviously I used the Dolphins for the first trip, and I've got the Navistars for this one, so it's not exact, like, I suppose, strictly speaking, I could have and should have used the... Uh, two more dolphins. The reason I didn't, to be honest, was thankfully the other day or whatever when the game was coming out, I went and bought a load of trucks from the Russian 
shop because uh, I was on the phase 8 maps and I was moving over to phase 9 and obviously on this one it only lets you buy American trucks and recently at the weekend I had issues with uh, when I was transferring over to phase 8 it kept blue screening me or I was just trying to move maps in general uh, yeah it kept blue screening me so I kind of didn't want to travel across to Russia to go and buy another load of dolphins I had three dolphins that uh, were in my garage kind of brand new so I used two of them and then, uh, yeah, obviously the Navistar is on like the American side, so I could buy two of these. Although I did, it was pretty high on my list to choose, because I knew I was only going to take a trailer like this. And, uh, yeah, in theory, the Navistar is a pretty good match for uh, doing this one. It kind of works out pretty nicely. And I've always liked the engine power on the Navistar. I like the Navistar in general. Got it painted up in army colours, sending the old army in to put the fires out. Um, yeah, just a quick edit there, because I had a, uh, what was it, Vorongrad parked on that one. That was just, I took a trailer there just to go and see and remind myself how much uh, water I was able to carry in one of these semi-trailers. Um, yeah, I got both of those filled up. <laughs> That's what she said. And yeah, the road train situation. The better thing about this setup, um, like I said, the trailer can hold 3,700, so you lose 100 litres compared to like the setup I was running with the Dolphin in the trailer. However, you do have a winch point right on the back of the trailer, so it's kind of a more natural line when you're actually doing a road train. And uh, yeah, since I had uh, 1,200 litres left over anyway on the first delivery, on this one I'm going to end up having 1,000 spare litres, so it kind of makes no difference in that sense, really. We'll see, after I got the water filled up, it was... a uh, uphill for a lot of this. I'd say in the scheme of things yeah, there's been a little bit of editing but roughly speaking they were actually about the same time. I think the first like when I finished with the dolphins was about 19 odd minutes through the video and obviously there's a little bit of talking at the beginning of that and then uh, yeah add another 19 minutes that's going to be 38 minutes so they're actually pretty similar amount of times whichever way you go. I would definitely say that the way I went with the dolphins though is the easier of the routes because you've got kind of a proper tarmac road running up the uh, the right hand side of the map and then you've got the bridges etc so it's kind of half tarmac roads half dirt roads this one is kind of more all dirt roads and they're a little bit yeah windy bumpy you've got a few water traps and rocks and all the rest of it but overall not too bad it's certainly doable going this way it's just it's a bit of a pain, like I say, it's not just this phase, and I've said it before, but when you do a road train, it just limits you to a speed that is just a few miles an hour less than your high gear. So it's a pain in the ass trying to get it into high gear and keep it going because it's always purposely trying to like hold it back from going its natural speed. So for various bits of this, I keep uh, I'm basically stuck in the auto gears, which used to be bearable. But these days, because they uh, since they've kind of nerfed them as well, yeah, you end up kind of stuck in uh, first gear for a lot of it, and then you get up into second. But like, you sort of need to wind up the revs in second before you jump into high gear. Every now and then, you get sort of downhill with the wind behind you, or you go over to the left or right of the road. You can usually pick up a little bit of speed. But I'd say in general, going the other way, like with the Dolphins, I was able to stay in high gear a lot more often. And as I said, I, I still think the Navistar is like a decently powerful vehicle. It's uh, At least on its own, it's always able to maintain high gear pretty damn well. I remember it was uh, an expensive engine. Like I say, this was one of the first main trucks I used, really, on this whole game. I had like some of the starter vehicles now, but after a day or two I finally got my Navistar sorted because uh, I didn't get it as a pre-order bonus for some reason, so I just bought it. Um, and yeah, kind of at the beginning the amount the missions were paying out, kind of every penny I was earning really, I was uh, chipping in towards this Navistar. And when I finally paid for the engine, which was about 24 and a half grand or something, that, um, yeah, it was a bit of a costly choice. It took me a good old while to earn that money, but once I did, like say, the uh, the amount of engine power this truck had was pretty pretty decent, I reckon. There's an awkward bit of road there. It kind of leans quite harshly to the uh, left. Well, if you're driving from the way I was, 
and it kind of drags you against those rocks so I think yeah the second other star is kind of stuck which at this point I wasn't too fussed because I was kind of thinking I don't really want to crawl along this road at two miles an hour so it was just a good excuse at the minute to split the road train up actually and as you can see now like on its own stick it in high gear and it's away at a, uh, a pretty nice speed as well certainly manageable I can live with uh, cruising around the map at this sort of speed and at least it's fast enough that it keeps you on your toes a little bit that's why, yeah, like I say, the problem when it forces you to go sort of five miles an hour is it's not the lack of speed itself but it's just the fact that it's a very tame drive then when there's not really a hell of a lot going on there's not really a lot to watch out for or anything So in theory, I was on in an hour and I was thinking, shall I just drop the hammer, go all the way there, and then kind of edit out the footage of driving the second one there. I ended up just stopping at this point, because I had like a downhill, downhill with the wind behind me section here, so... Uh, yeah, caught the second Navistar at which, again, I edited that out, because it would literally be the same bit of road I just drove down twice in a row. And yeah, for this one as well, I didn't... I was on in an hour and about trying it, but I was running a little bit late with time as well but um I'm pretty certain sorry is my phone going off just in case anyone's checking their phone um I'm pretty certain I'll be able to balance a loaf on this fuel trailer and pack it on there as well uh, I didn't in the end mostly because to be honest the amount of fuel you've got with the Navistar is at 340 litres which is pretty decent but the Navistar definitely drinks a hell of a lot of fuel it's always up in like the sort of low 30s really I suppose especially when you've got a road train going and you're kind of hauling that behind you so uh, yeah even though it's got a decent sized fuel tank it also does burn a pretty hefty amount of fuel it's probably one of the biggest uh, fuel drinking trucks in the game really and that's that rock my trailer just bumped over that I got stuck on the other day when I was uh, bringing the derry this way I think it just got a little bit unlucky and to be fair to it back then I don't think I had the top engine which I have got now and I've given it a little go, not a proper workout since then but it's, I'd say it's better but the biggest limiting factor it feels like with a Derry is like it's speed cap um, I had a little go of AGL's Derry uh, so like a mod version and yeah that felt great that's like got a nice amount of engine power um, just having a different gearbox that's got more speed felt great and it was actually a really nice control of a vehicle. I was just while I was messing around trying to test out those blue screens, I was sort of just going in circles around the garage and you can essentially like drift it but quite nice and controlled, not as just where it drifts off and goes like it's skidding on black ice. It was a, it actually feels like a decent rally truck in a yeah, in AGL's setup, so like I say, I still definitely like the truck in just the normal setup, but yeah, there's every now and then it does feel a little bit on the slow side. Like I say, I suppose even if I was able to run that as a setup for this mission, it uh, inevitably would have took me longer just because it is in the slower gearboxes. I'm not sure as well, but I don't think they have. They should have added a uh, like a little Scout water trailer as well, because we've got the Scout fuel trailer. They could have just essentially cloned that like they've done with all these trailers from the fuel ones. And uh, yeah, just because every now and then you might get a situation if they let it hold the same amount, uh, it'd be 900 litres of fuel anyway in the Scout trailer, so if they did that the same for the water, then uh, yeah, here and there you might find a situation where you just need the final 900. Although I suppose, strictly speaking, it's uh, yeah, unless you tow in like it. I'm using road trains with two trucks at the minute, so I suppose in theory though, it probably be a bit of a pain in the ass to lift the uh, the water trailer and all that but I could technically pack a loaf and a trailer on top of this trailer and at this point as I was getting here this truck's running lowish on fuel and uh, as I said when I was running the double dolphins that the lead truck tends to use more fuel than the uh, the one at the back so I switched over to this one and yeah you can see this has still got about twice the amount of fuel left um, just made this the lead vehicle for a little bit, so just hoping it uh, evens out the fuel. Yeah, 
know, got a bit of high gear for this, but yeah, there's all these little patches of water along the way that are only like brief. You get over them pretty quickly, but their main achievement is to essentially kill you traveling along traveling along in the high range gear. You have to keep going back down into auto. And crawling along. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've like I'm 99.9% .9 certain these trucks were like set up identically. I think other than the front bumpers, I think they were different. But yeah, this truck, I don't know. Maybe it's just this section of road, but it felt like it didn't have quite as much muscle to haul along as the, when the other vehicle was the lead vehicle. And uh, yeah, like I say as well, once I've done this mission, um, it unlocks a mission, I believe it's in the third set of contracts, where you have to deliver some railway tracks to the railway yard. Uh, a few people will let me know, Justin Lynch and a couple of others. Um, when you deliver the rail tracks, it's only, I think, a four-slot cargo now, not five-slot cargo. However, it's a wider cargo, so it won't let you fit it on like the normal stuff, like a semi-sideboard trailer or the, uh, the, what's it called, the step deck. Or I assume the ramp flatbed. You need to take the wide semi-trailer thing with the saddle high attachment. So uh, yeah, I appreciate the people letting me know and just passing it on to you guys. If you're going to get to that mission at some point, um, yeah, you're going to have to take like I, mean, I suppose that'd be a good one to run the derry on with a uh, saddle high and then get the wide trailer. I can't remember the name of the trailer now, but yeah, something wide. <laughs> it's the one that looks kind of like the step deck trailer, it's just the saddle high version really. Um, yeah, otherwise it's not going to let you pack the rails, uh, the rail things onto it. And I think it was Justin Lynch said as well, um, the mission doesn't hint about you need a crane or anything, but you have to manually load the rail track, so yeah, you're going to need a crane, which again, the derry should work out nicely. That's one thing I do like about the derry, is it's got a big enough chassis and all the rest of it that you can fit the uh, the crane on the sideboard and a trailer but in this case I suppose like um, just the crane and a saddle high and then have that trailer so at least you can run that kind of option and yeah at this point I was seriously considering like shall I just disconnect them and run the last one and then I looked on the map I was like well there's not that far to go so I'll uh, yeah, try for a bit longer, but again, probably should have kept a bit of an eye on the fuel. Although in theory, I think even though this lead truck burns more fuel, I'm guessing that the rear truck kind of burns less fuel than you would if you ran them separately, because I think the truck behind is getting like, a little bit of a help in hand from this. Downhill section, finally get into high gear. Behind those trees there, there is a P512 PF and a loaf. That's um, I did a mission the other day with it, so I'm just throwing that out there as it will become a little bit more useful in a minute. Got another water trap that I knew was going to slow me down. If I just had a nice clean run from where I was and was able to carry on in high gear, I probably would have been alright and just about able to make it. But at this point, I could see the fuel was looking pretty low. And I kind of thought, if I carry on going like this as a road train, then it's probably... I'm going to run out before I get there. And at this point, I was hoping that the truck behind had a bit more fuel left in it, because now that's like not the lead vehicle. So yeah, disconnected them. I also didn't really want to crawl along here still in auto, so yeah, I was able to just about get into high gear. But like I said, even this felt... This truck, for some reason, felt like it was uh, not too keen on staying in the high gear. All along here. Felt like it was trying to fight against it a little bit more. It did stay in the high gear, though. And then, yeah, this is the other place that you've got to drop the water off. Like I said, I did the other one first, just so I don't kind of... But where they've put it, it's... As long as we don't have to use this place for much else, but I think we are gonna unlock like warehouse access once we also replace the tracks at this place. So yeah, it's a bit of an awkward place to drop the water off. You kind of block the uh, the yard up really. 
And yeah, now, so I drop that lot of water off, uh, switch back to this vehicle, and as you can see though, the fuel is pretty low, so... Given how much this thing drinks, it's going up into the 30 litres again, I kind of already knew, like, yeah, I don't think this is going to make it. And strictly speaking, if I'd known, I suppose, in hindsight, I probably could have moved a little bit of fuel from that first truck I'd just sent off, because I still had, like, 30-something litres left over on that. So maybe if I'd moved, like, 25 litres or something over... I might have just been able to make it with both of them. But at this point, this thing's kind of running out of steam. It starts doing that juddering as it's running out. Uh, yeah, so I sent in the P512 PF and the loaf, transferred a bit of fuel over, not loads. Uh, was it about 40 litres, 35 litres, or whatever it was? Just enough. See, again, if I had a goddamn horse on me, it would have solved that problem. But that's why, like, at the minute, I'm kind of taking loaves and stashing them all over the place because well yeah there's a prime example saves me having to go all the way back to the garage just to bring some kind of fuel truck to fill me up for this last little section I'm gonna smash the truck up this junk a little bit to get it out of the way and yeah, drop this off, and uh, oh, it kind of just brings up the mission completed thing, but I assume I've got about a thousand litres left when I'm done, since I had like a hundred less per truck than the Dolphins, and I had 1200 litres left for them. Um, yeah, and that's it. It comes up with a message saying, yep, great, we've put the fires out. Um, you get a high reward or something. The money is pretty decent, to be fair. It's a bit of a longer mission, I will say, but still, at least the money reflects it instead of being like five grand or something. And uh, yeah, that's that one done. That's that one in the bag. But that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn beast. And I'll be back soon.